Yeah, so sex in that state, pretty mind-blowing. But can we say for people who are in a relationship now, the fact that each of you are trying to work on different injuries, your physical sexual desire for each other can cycle as well because a, a lot of it, just by nature of the fact that none of us are at one with God and we're in a relationship, there are some injuries influencing that attraction. So as you start to work through your injuries, your part, you might feel less attracted to your partner until they deal with something or, or vice versa. But if that person is your soulmate, the more that you work through, the more compelled they'll be to work through. And also once you work through each of you, work through your issues, then the connection will just feel stronger and stronger. I was thinking perhaps we could illustrate a few things from our own life together in the last year. Um, when Mary and I first met, I felt straight away that she was my soulmate and I knew straight away that she was. But Mary did not feel anything at all about that. She was just interested in uh, what I was teaching basically, aside from the Jesus thing. So Mary then got very angry about the Jesus thing. Uh, and that, that of course caused her to feel like emotions of anger towards myself. Does that make sense? What that triggered in me straight away was emotions of rejection of my soulmate. So I had to go away for a few weeks and have a good cry about after wanting my soulmate for a long, long time, meeting my soulmate and feeling straight away rejected by her. Does that make sense? Once I dealt with that emotion, and the way the law of attraction occurred was that Mary found out. Yeah, so I found out then that this is what AJ felt about me. And I wasn't really an intellectual decision, but I just felt compelled to contact him. And so we were in contact and started, I had this real pull towards him. So while Mary wasn't very happy with what I was saying in return, she still felt a desire to speak with me. And that desire within her grew until we started, until she started feeling some sexual desires for me. So by, by this stage, we're still, like now I'm overseas, no, so, but then when I started to feel a sexual desire for you, that actually triggered some more things for you as well. Yeah. There was some... I went through, while I was overseas, some emotions of being unworthy of her desire. So then I had to feel those emotions, some shame and some shame emotions and so forth. Now that then caused her desire to increase, and so eventually we decided that we'd actually catch up while we're overseas in England. So, um, so by this stage we're having a bit of phone sex and so forth. Her mother was feeling that I was trying to convince her that, I, that she was Mary Magdalene and all the time I was just trying to convince her to get into bed with me. <laughs> exaggeration perhaps. <laughs> but uh, what actually happened then is uh, Mary decided to come overseas and our initial thing was that we were just going to like have a sort of a platonic sort of a relationship <laughs> which lasted about a day. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then what happened was that uh, four days into us catching up with each other again um, Mary went through this really difficult emotion. Which was triggered by you and was about you. Yeah. So her emotion was? You want to describe? Uh, it was grief and anger and, um, yeah, grief about the loss of my husband and anger at him for abandoning me and things like that. And it was directly, specifically directed at me. But she, like, for her, before she came to spend time with me, she thought, no, I'm not Mary Magdalene, I'll show AJ, you know, he's just AJ and I'm Mary. Sure, we can get along, but it's got nothing to do with being Jesus and Mary Magdalene. And then she went through this really big emotional experience, which, yeah, yeah, but it's all linked, isn't it? She went through this big emotional experience, and, and then after that, straight away, there was a straight away a detunement from me sexually. Because what, what emotion's kicking in now? 
fear is starting to kick in. Then a week later, she has another fairly big emotional experience where she wants to... Do you mind just being specific? Uh, where AJ rejected me sexually. <laughs> because I could feel that she was wanting me to actually get away from an emotion within her. Does that make sense? So I was trying to stay in truth all this time. Like, if any time I felt that Mary was using sex to get away from an emotion within herself, I would actually then say, no, I can't be involved in that. And she went through then the rejection, which then connected her with another emotion from the first century, which then frightened her even further, right? and then caused even more distance between us. Yeah, so I went from finding AJ quite attractive and wow to in the space of a couple of months feeling I'm not even physically attracted to this man. Nothing. I can't, I can't feel anything and yeah. yeah. So, um, so at that point we, we separated. Right? So because I felt I couldn't stay with her, obviously she felt she couldn't stay with me uh, because she was no longer attracted to me. And I went through three months of very hard emotions, some of which I've talked about with you before, and some of which I think are even on DVD, unfortunately. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, spent three or four hours a day crying about the whole situation, the rejection. There was feelings of anger as well about it, like, what can I change about myself? I've already tried to change so much. And, you know, there's lots and lots of emotions that came up for me. And so I worked my way through all of those emotions. Now, as I was doing that, what were you doing? I was having a pretty hard time um, and feeling a lot of, I was also feeling rejection and, but I couldn't really understand, um, feeling very lost and angry and especially when, I, I'm very exposed because AJ was talking about all of this on DVD and sort of feeling a lot of injustice and what's going on and how can this be happening in my life and lots of things. I don't know if I worked through any of them. <laughs> she still did. Yeah. No, no, no. So, so what happened uh, during that period, obviously, is I was working through these emotions and then I had this really big emotional release one evening. Um, Tristan, my son, was there and uh, I was crying for a long, long time. <laughs> And really, in a lot of pain, physical pain as well, and and I was I was on the floor in my in my um, bedroom, just sobbing and sobbing for hours and hours, and uh, and I just felt this big release about, it, and it was about how I was feeling about myself in respect to my soulmate. Two days later, um, Mary, uh, I went to a session in Gympie, and Mary decided that she was going to go. And she rang me up the, the next that morning before, can I come? Um, so as soon as I dealt with that emotion, she felt drawn again. Does that make sense? As soon as I dealt with the emotion. Then, of course, it was like this dance going on. Um, I'd, I'd deal with an emotion. That would trigger Mary. She'd get afraid. She'd go off for a little while. She'd then deal with the emotion, feel attractive again, feel attracted again, come back, and then that would trigger an emotion in me, so I'd deal with that emotion, she'd then feel afraid, she'd go away again, and so forth. And that cycle happened over the next three or four months. Um, does that make sense, what's yes. going on there? So, so, and notice that her desire for me went down every time fear kicked in. Right. And then her desire for me increased every time she got through some fear. That'd be right. Yeah. I also had a lot of realizations in that time about um, uh, myself as a woman and um, what I like to have in my environment to make myself feel safe and secure. Um, and learnt a lot about sexual projections that I um, I don't know really how to explain it all, but. Um, that it was quite threatening for me to have just this one man, Jesus, really sexually attracted to me because it felt very unsafe. That was a lot of the fear that was being triggered. I felt very vulnerable physically and emotionally because of some first century things. Um, 
but I, I felt very comfortable when there was no men coming on to me, but I felt that men found me attractive. Um, yeah, so, so we went through a part just a few weeks after we got back together again, where Mary felt this feeling of a huge attraction for another man. Which really scared me, and I, it was not something that, I don't have a history of that kind of thing, like I'm usually with one man and that's it. And, yeah. Yeah. So, so then she was encouraged by her friend to actually not tell me about it. And, 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 but she felt like she had to withdraw from our relationship again. Does that make sense? So she withdrew from our relationship. And although I felt what was going on, it was only a week later that I actually found out the truth about what, what had happened. And, and I knew straight away who the man was, by the way, too. And that was a very injury-based attraction. And in retrospect, it would have been much better just to speak to AJ about it because I didn't want to act on it. But it was it was an emotion coming from me that I didn't understand. I suddenly felt attracted to this other person, and I thought, oh, this is wrong. Oh my gosh, I'm ashamed of that. I have to withdraw from AJ. Whereas if we had spoken about it, it would have um, would have resolved, resolved it, it quite rapidly. quickly. Yeah. yeah. So so what had happened inside of Mary at that stage was. That <coughs> There's a, Mary's had these big issues of regarding security with regard to sexuality. And many of you ladies, by the way, have the same issue. And that is, you only feel sexually attracted to somebody that you feel secure with. And the only people that you feel secure with are people you can control. Right? Does that make sense? So for many of you, you actually enter a relationship be, not because of love, because you have this strong feeling that this is a person you can be secure with and it feels like love. This is a person you can be secure with. This is a person you can be safe with. This is a person... And the reason why you can be secure and safe is because you can control him to a degree. Well, you can stay in control in the situation. They're not going to challenge. They're not going to uh, be bossy or... Yeah. Make you feel vulnerable, yeah. even. And so... Mary's history is that she's had lots of relationships, which is, well, I haven't had lots of relationships, but she, each relationship she's had has been a relationship with a person she could control in this matter. Does that make sense? No, no you're not an ogre. <laughs> is he, she's not an ogre, is she? <laughs> but it's just an emotion. And the emotion was desiring to feel special but also desiring to be in control, not out overtly in control, because Mary's not like that, but the subvert, subvertly, if you like, in control of the relationship, not allowing herself to be fully vulnerable to the male. Does that make sense? Now, with me, like, for a start, I'm saying I'm Jesus, so I could be crazy. That's a lot of, like, like insecure emotions. <laughs> then I'm saying she's Mary Magdalene, so that, you know, there's there's other issues there. Then, of course, there's all these memories that start popping up that she's had of a life with me where she allowed herself to connect to me emotionally and sexually and got absolutely hammered emotionally because of it. I died. She went through this terrible period of distraught feelings and she, she had this strong feeling of like, like being with me is the most unsafe thing she could possibly consider doing. Don't do that, right? yeah. But I also had another emotion. <laughs> it's true. Um, I also had another emotion about being vulnerable with the man, and I had never actually look because AJ can feel all of your emotions and he can tell you what they are, and so he's a man telling me my deepest darkest stuff, and I never let a man see that before, and I would say to him, well, how can you be attracted to me if you can see all that stuff inside of me, you know? And, so I realised a big pattern I had kept all my life was to be the good girl and the nice girl and just show the nice parts of me within a relationship so I felt quite secure. Um, and so obviously it was very scary to have someone like opening the Pandora's box and saying, it's all laying out there. I still, I love you very much, but... And I felt really like very confronted and confused about that. So that, of course, made her feel even less sexually attracted to me. <laughs> right? Well, you imagine, every single day, in fact, a lot of hours during the day, you're getting reflected at you an emotion that you just had 
that was out of harmony with love. It's the instant you have it. Right? And at the same time, the person doing it is saying that they love you. How hard is that? I, I was feeling a lot of self-judgment and shame about myself, so it was very hard for me to then feel really attractive to somebody else. I didn't even feel attractive to myself. Yeah. So of course that causes the sexual desire, of course, to shut down again and to, and to be very, very difficult to maintain. So can you see how fear and other emotions, desire for security and all those kind of things, can it affect the sexual desire? Now, Mary's dealt with some of those emotions. For instance, the security emotion, uh, the need or the need to feel special emotion is something that you're pretty close to work through now, isn't it? And, and as she's worked through that, now she, she understands that I do feel she's special even though I know what emotions in her she's yet to deal with. Does that make sense? And so she still feels attracted to me now, whereas before she didn't feel attracted to me about that. He's pretty attractive, isn't he? <laughs> you know, what does that happen? <laughs> I'm speechless, that's pretty eye rear, eh? And embarrassed it. Um, yeah, so, so what's actually happening now is as we each deal with our own emotions about ourselves, what's happening is our desire for the other person is growing and our need for the other person is lessening. So we're having a less and less need for the other person to fulfill certain emotional desires, and our desire for the other person is actually growing in intensity, which creates the sexual desire growing in intensity, <coughs> if that makes sense. So does it, is there any questions about that? process that any of you have like I wanted to explain that just to show you how even if you meet your soulmate how you're going to go through lots and lots of different emotions and how you're going to be very very tempted in fact to withdraw from it because the emotions will be so painful